The show tonight in a bit of a somber note, Johnny Ritchie, a couple of the members of the Ultimate Combat family. In the past seven days have passed on. Passed on. Uh, it's, it's, we just watched a very touching uh, montage. <laughs> I'm going to have a hard time keeping yeah. it together. The, so. <laughs> Yeah. There wasn't a dry eye in the house tonight, Mike, and it was because these two fighters are loved by everyone. Uh, the memories that they have, we're all going to cherish and keep going forever. Justin Cunningham and Travis Paxton, and we love them. I'm going to tell you something. They would like to see oh, absolutely. nothing more than nothing this house to, to light on fire absolutely. tonight and see some great fights tonight. So absolutely. Let's, let's put on a show for put on the show for tonight. Them. Absolutely. Hey, Johnny, <laughs> we've challenged neighboring states and done very well. Done very well. But we took a big bite Ooh, this time, John. A big bite, Mike. We brought in some really, really tough guys from Montana, Nebraska, Nebraska and, Colorado. and Colorado. All these guys are tough. Looking at these guys yesterday at the weigh-ins, Mike had an opportunity to meet them, and so did you. And these guys are grumpy, they're tough, and they just want to show Utah that this isn't the state to be if you want to mix it up in MMA. So they've got something to prove, Mike. And i got to tell you, though, all these guys are really cool guys, but cool. you can tell they're going to bring their fight game tonight. <laughs> the Utah boy says, bring it! Bring hey, it! It's the ultimate combat experience coming right at you. for quite hey, some man. time, and he has always wanted to fight in the Delta Center. Finally, he's here, Johnny. He is here, and he's here to make a statement against Brandon Burge, who's a pretty tough kid in his own right. Mike, these guys are going to get in here and mix it up, and this is for a championship, Mike. This, this is the real deal. This is the light heavyweight championship of the Ultimate Combat Experience. Hey, light heavyweight, no holds barred. Check it out. All right, Ruben, I'm starting the questions off with you, man. What does it mean for you to be fighting tomorrow at the Delta Center? Man, it feels good. Finally, I got here. Michael Jordan broke Carl Malone's heart, and I'll break Brandon Burge's heart tomorrow. Oh, okay, right there. Whew. So tell us what gives you the edge, man. Why are you going to walk away the victor, Ruben? I train. I train real hard every day. It will pay off. It will. 
All right, he said he trains every day and it's going to pay off. Why don't you tell us why you think you're going to walk away or tell us what it means for you to be fighting tomorrow at the Delta Center. I don't know what Carl Malone over there is thinking. This is MJ right here, man. Oh, right here he says he's, he says he's the MJ. Well, Birds, tell us why you think that, man. Why are you going to walk away the victor? Oh, I'm excited, man. Going to be a good experience. I've been doing a lot of crazy Cardo, and, and I think I got a reach on him, so it should be a good fight, man. All right, right there, both of you guys shake hands. Best luck to both of you guys tomorrow at the Delta Center. Oh, we know Johnny Ritchie is somebody's heart. It's getting broken <laughs> somewhere right here. Uh, you know, Ruben Flores, he really has. He's coveted uh, being in this show, being in the spectacle of the finals for as long as I can remember. Every round he comes in and says, Mike, I'm going to do it this round. I'm going to get there. Finally, he's here. Well, he gets so close, Mike. He gets so close to making it to the big dance. Now's his opportunity. He really wants to shine against Brandon, the ghost Burge. But uh, well, like Burge said, he might have a little bit of reach over Ruben Flores, yeah, Mike. Yeah, Ruben Flores, 5'10", 200. 15 pounds goes by the nickname of the hammer and, and you know Johnny uh, he it's tough to give up all that reach but he's sure. always done really well against much taller fighters he has you know and for the Brandon that goes birds to step in Mike it's a big accomplishment for two now that he's wanted it as long as Ruben Flores I mean he's just kind of a baby in the game but he's beat some tough kids to make it to the finals to fight a guy like Ruben Flores and I really think that may be a factor that okay. might be that nervousness inside the cage might uh, make a Very little bit well of difference. Brandon Burge goes six foot two 200 pounds Trains up there with the Mushin Fighting Corps. Those guys, a tough bunch of guys yeah, up there. We, we all know that. And as you mentioned, goes by the nickname of the Ghost here. And we're going to get this thing going. Light heavyweight, no holds barred. Lonnie Foster is going to get these guys set up and get this thing rocking. Well, yeah, as you see right there, you know, right there, he just ready to go. Ruben Flores is ready to mix it up. And he's got that weird style, Mike, that we've seen come out of Mafu. It's, I, I don't te technically know what they call it, but kind of that the, Rope a dope hands down low. <laughs> they call it boxing, Johnny. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, that, maybe anyway. that's what it is. It looks like uh, Brandon Burns trying to get a uh, choke cold here on early in the early goings here, and this is right where Ruben Flores did not want to be. He's yeah. in the guard of his opponent, and fortunately gets his head out of there. Good set out of there. Stand him up. Get him up. Now that's where he wants to be. He wants to get back and box with this kid. <laughs> and and uh, Ruben Flores, this is his forte. This is his background. Is boxing. This is where he's at. Well, he's got to get inside, Mike, if he's going to want to uh, get a shot at Burge. But then again, right there. It looks like he's being the one to, to take Brandon Bridge to the ground. Well, it did look like it there, Johnny. And I, I've got to tell you, though, if boxing is your forte and your opponent has si a six-inch reach on you, maybe you got to rethink your forte and, and, and maybe do you something do, Mike. different. And that looks like what Ruben Flores has done here. Oh, well, you may be right. I think he did catch a couple shots that he was unexpected. Uh, Brandon just kind of stood back and, and hit him. And I think there's some blood coming out of maybe is it Ruben's looks eye? Looks like his nose. Is I'm his not nose? sure. But he's, he does have some blood coming out of there. He definitely did get caught with one of the shots. And, and so right so did go for a takedown here but now once again he's in his opponent's guard uh, and, and it doesn't look like Berg is going to get this chokehold unless he gets underneath well, the arm there and that's what he did he did a good job of making the transition Mike now he's going to look for his own fist underneath there grab a hold of it and really lay the pressure on you know, you know Johnny that's the motion fighting core there they make great adjustments and great transitions and I think this fight's over here and Ruben Flores wanted for so long wow. to get to the big dance and the dance didn't last very long oh my gosh Mike I didn't even see I think the tap was so fast but, you know, maybe Ruben, that says something about him. Get your butt uh, doing some jiu-jitsu and know <laughs> when you're in a position like that how to defend against it. Because if he did it, quit with the choke, there's the tap. Yeah, you got to cross train, as we've said so many times before you saw that in your crush combat camp where he did, in fact, get a tap. And Brandon, the ghost Burge, comes away with the light heavyweight championship, Johnny. And just like Carl Malone, Mike, Ruben Flores is going home with a broken heart. This post-fight interview brought to you by Global Marketing Alliance. They need motivated sales associates looking to make a six-figure income. Call 486-4221. Ruben, what happened, man? I know you wanted it so bad. Out of anybody, you were so excited to get here and find the Delta Center in front of the crowd, in front of your family. What happened? Man, I got caught. That's about it. I climbed to the top. He pushed me down. I will be back, though. Hey, Harold, hey, that's the right attitude you absolutely have to have, Ruben. You got to have that attitude to come in here and fight. You lose, you bounce back. It's what you do with that loss. You're going to come back, maybe get a couple stitches, and then come back? Oh, yeah. I'll be back. This post-fight interview is sponsored by Beehive Bell Bonds, because sometimes bad things happen to good people.
You look good in yours. Thanks, man. <laughs> and you're going to wear it with pride, brother. You won tonight. Big win. How does it feel? It feels real good, man. I, I love Ruben. I didn't want to fight the guy. He's such a nice guy. I'd rather hang out with him, but it was a fun fight. Oh, you fought. Now, now you can go hang out. Congratulations. You're the champion. Great job. Thanks, man. I just want to say thanks to Dan and Brian. Say hi to Anna, Brittany, Brianna. I love you, ladies. Come on, man. All right. Brandon comes in. First time in the Ultimate Combat Experience, round 17. He comes in and wins the whole dang thing. He wins all. And that just goes to show you can become a champion just by stepping in here and fighting. You know, Ruben Flores is a tough kid. He, he's, he's got a chip on his shoulder now, Mike, and he's going to come back with a vengeance. He'll be training with Brandon Berg on his mind, <laughs> but he hey, will. you can come in here and join us, Anytime. man. Anytime. Just like Brandon did, just come like in Brandon here and did. mix it up. Give Johnny a call. <laughs> give me a call, man. Yeah, give either one of us a call. All right, hey, we got more of the Ultimate Combat. Don't go anywhere. The Ultimate Messing around tonight. We're gonna bring out a fight that is a main event fight on many, many cards, and it's a fight that literally, man, it's gonna be a battle. Who's fighting, Johnny? Hey, Harold Du Cambio versus Big J Justin Wright getting in here to mix Are it up. Are you kidding me? That's it's gonna be a great, it's gonna get these people going. Hey, it's gonna lead the pack, Mike. Cambio is slick, he's a Tough. technician. Big J's got the ugliest left hand, but it just yeah, catch knocks you. People, people out. out. There's no way to train for this guy because it comes from everywhere. From everywhere. Light heavyweight, no one's barred, check it out. All right, Harold, I'm going to start the questions off with you. First off, I want to know uh, what does it mean for you to be fighting tomorrow at the Delta Center for like your third or fourth time? I'm just very excited to be here. Um, I always like to fight for you guys, man. You know, that this is my house. You know, I've been saying it. And hopefully tomorrow I'll come out with a win. So, uh, Harold, why don't you tell the people at home and people here tonight, why are you going to walk away the victor? Uh, what gives Harold Lucambio the edge in tomorrow's competition? Yeah, everybody that knows me knows that I train hard. Uh, and this is going to be, you know, I do have a full-time job besides this, but this is definitely where I'm, you know, I'm gonna stick to it. This is, I, I take it very seriously, and I appreciate, you know, Justin for taking this fight, man. I appreciate that. And uh, tomorrow will be a good show, and you guys, you guys that know me, and it'll be a good fight. All right, Big J, you're up next. What does it mean for you to be fighting tomorrow inside the cage at the Delta Center? It'll be a lot of fun. Done it before. Look forward to doing it again. All right. And your opponent is Harold the Constricted Lou Cambio. Tell us why you think you're going to walk away with the victory. Justin, what gives you the edge? Well, I have a lot of respect for Harold. And out of all the guys to be fighting, I, you know, you're a nice guy, <laughs> whatever. But I think that probably I have, I think I'm a bit, little better fighting naturally, maybe reflexes and stuff. So we'll see. OK, so whether it's reflexes or training, these guys are going to mix it up. Shake hands and best of luck to both of you guys tomorrow night. All right, Johnny Ritchie, well, uh, Harold Lucambio made it very clear that being the constrictor is a full-time <laughs> job. It's a full-time job, and Mike, what would the finals be without Harold or Justin? I mean, right, these exactly. guys have, have, have been doing it so much, have been fighting so hard, and really uh, putting putting it out there, Mike, that they are the people to beat, and what a what a honor it is to have these guys finally meet inside the cage and, and mix it up this way. You know, I gotta tell you, there were so many guys in this weight class that were vying for this position to be in this show and to fight in this particular fight and these two were the lucky winners of being able to fight one another and, and frankly Johnny this is a fight that I think a lot of people have wanted to see for quite some time. Harold Okami is only five foot six, yeah. 180 pounds, goes by the nickname of the Constrictor but he is no stranger to our cage. He What's is right? no stranger Mike and he's one of these guys that if you get to the ground with the mic he is sneaky, he's going to grab a submission, he's going to twist an ankle, put you in an arm bar whereas Justin Wright, not very technical but the kid is a slugger, an all out brawler and he just wants to knock you out of your shoes. And unfortunately, when you're only five foot six and you're fighting a kid the size of Justin Big J Wright, you've got to get in and take him down. He's six foot two, 175 pounds, and uh, you just have a hard time getting past that left hand of his. You do, Mike, and and there, you're right. There is no way to train. You could bring in top level professional fighters, and I'm telling you, you just never know what to expect from Justin. I've seen him just cripple people with that left, just knock them right out. And I think Harold's strategy, Mike, is going to have to be to get in close, get the takedown, get Justin into his world. All right, well, Ethan Andrews, the third man in the cage tonight, he's going to be keeping these guys honest here. And this is going to be a tough one to referee, I think, yeah. a tough one to judge, tough one to referee, and, and really probably a tough one to call. 
Tough one to call. Uh, once again, you know, Harold, don't stand outside and trade with Big J. We've seen him beat numerous people this way. But let's, you know, Justin Wright can be beat. There's no doubt about it. He can be beat. Uh, I see him in the gym training. He does train hard, but he does get submitted, Mike. John, look how look how strong he is, though. Harold Acambio is very good at that head throw, and he felt like he had Justin pushing into him enough where he was going to be able to take that head throw and take him down. And Justin Wright, all he did was got his hips back, flattened out, and came out on top. Came out on top, and you saw Harold right there underneath looking for the sweep. Um, Justin Wright, once again, training with Stephen Sharp. Loves to throw elbows, loves to cut you and end the fight early if he has the opportunity. And that's what he's going to do with Harold. Pin him against the cage and rack him with elbows. So do you train with those guys over there? Have you no, seen no, him no. I've just seen him. I've, you know, I've seen Stephen long enough and seen him fight long enough that I know that's exactly what he's telling Justin Wright. You know, he's in his corner yelling, hey, throw elbows. End the fight early. Don't, you know, cut this kid and, and get out of there with the, without a mark on you. You know what, though? Justin Wright's come a long ways. He used to be just a brawler. And you mentioned him moment ago that he's not that technical. Well, I think he's gotten a lot more technical sure. since he first started this thing. He's learning that ground and pound game very well. He's not just camping out on top of his opponent. He is setting up and using his body weight and landing big elbows and trying to cut his opponent open. Well, Mike, one great thing about Ultimate Combat Experience, Mike, is not only are we helping ourselves to shows like this with these awesome fighters, but we're also helping out every gym in the state of Utah. People see this. They want to get better. They're going to go somewhere and train. And I really think that's what Justin Wright's done. He's found a gym that he likes, and he's stuck to it and he's training there and getting better no we've definitely done that i mean definitely the gyms have benefited but you know uh, you can see the progression here once these guys did finally saw realize that hey i probably need to go learn some technique here instead of just coming in and slugging uh, <laughs> the, the elevation of competition has really come up well mike it's only going to get you so far you know you're a stand-up fighter you're going to come across a guy that's just as powerful as you but likes to take you down and likes to submit you and that's going to happen it's just look not at, a, a question of when but or look not at, how but when look at justin right though he is being pushed off by Harold Lucambio's legs, and his arms are still long enough to strike <laughs> Harold Lucambio. Now Harold trying to uh, reverse triangle choke here, and uh, it, it looks like Justin looks pretty comfortable right now. He here. looks pretty comfortable, Mike, but what you don't know is that's actually a pretty great choke right there. If he can get his arm and pull it across and really get that head down, he could tap Justin right from this position. Well, he's got kind of a squishy glutamus maximus there, and it looks like Justin <laughs> thought it was a pillow. He's he just laid his head right kinda, there and he's kind of chilling. And I think I Steve, uh, heard Steve Sharp singing him a lullaby, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the case. Yeah. No, but Harold right there doing a great job listening to his corners. You know, one thing about Harold Mike that's true is he's alert. You know, you know and, and, and Ethan Andrews, surprisingly to me, stood in and started that one over. When, when a triangle choke is on like that, um, typically you see a, an attempted submission, at least you'll see a, a, a referee let the action go. Oh. But it didn't look like Harold was really trying to improve himself. And, and no. so I, you know, that actually was a, a pretty decent call. Pretty decent call. And, you know, that's Ethan Andrews. He's glad to be back, glad to step in and help out. Uh, not our usual everyday referee, Mike, but he is making the, the trip from Florida to come down and help us out. Oh, Justin Wright winning or finishing that round with a big flurry and we always talk about you got to send the uh judges a message and you can really do that with a big flurry to finish the round here and once again Harold Lucamio trying to head throw his opponent not successfully and just right doing all the right things once they get down to the ground yeah he did you know uh, not not very not looking for submissions just looking to ground and pound you uh, Harold it doesn't look marked though Mike he doesn't look like he's bleeding he doesn't look like he's got any cuts and uh, maybe that's just because uh, he was doing a great job underneath defending the, those shots as well both these guys doing a pretty good job of t taking minimal uh, shots in that last round oh, with Justin Wright as he always left. does lands that big stupid looking left hand and hurt Harold Acambio just a little bit. Yeah, like. rocked him. Yeah, sent him, sent him on the canvas. But Harold, hey, stand right back up and trade with him. I think uh, once know. again we talk about adjustments being made in the corner and Harold, this is what he wants to do. He'll fake a shot. He doesn't even commit to the shot that much because he shoots in and then he pulls you back into his guard and he's almost always fighting off his back. And, and, and that's one thing, Mike, that I think's maybe left the judges with a sour taste in their mouth before because they don't really know Harold game plan. They don't really know that's what he's trying to do. And maybe to the untrained eye, which, you know, is out there, they think, oh, this is boring. Harold, he you know, but he's take down there. Did, see, he got his take down there, rounded up in, in uh, full mount position and lost it and found himself right back on his back. It almost seems like he's too natural. He's like a weeble that wobbles. Yeah. And always winds up on his back. Always winds up on his back, but always looking to better his position. And I know it's hard when you've got Justin Wright's forearm sh shoved down your throat. You know, it might be hard to really, uh, you know, to, to, to change positions because Justin Wright, let's face it, he's a powerful kid. Well, let, let's make one thing clear, though. Our judges are not untrained no, people. No, they, no, they I know. They understand what they're 
looking for. But I'm just for. saying, the people that are watching, to the people that are watching right now, um, you know, it, it looks, and sometimes they, they'll boo Harold because they really don't know the chess match that's going on right there. Yeah, I got to be honest as well, though. As a judge, I don't like seeing a guy in a fight that, that con constantly pulls somebody down uh -huh. on top of him, uh, especially when you've got a guy with really long arms like Justin Wright who can punch through your guard. Well, and, and he lands shots when you've got him in your guard. Well, I think that's why they're going to leave it up to Justin Wright to finish that. You know, they're, you know, they're, they're hoping, you know, at least me, I'm hoping that's the case. It's either, hey, Harold, get a submission here, or Justin Wright's going to end up knocking this kid out. I think that's where you have to leave it. But Harold, he, he does a good job. He never stops working. Like, this kid, we know, can go three three-minute rounds very easily. Yeah, absolutely. And I got to tell you, every time Harold the Cobb steps into the cage we know it's going to be a long drawn out hard fought fight wow. either way you know and and he matches up against every one of his opponents just like this just like this uh, right there you saw the power of justin Wright virtually just sitting up when harold had full mount and getting a reverse might getting a sweep that's that's tough and uh, Ethan Andrews telling Justin Wright to get his hand off the cage there. He was using the, the cage just a little bit. Now, he's not going to stop that there because it looks like Justin Wright's in a little bit of danger, so you wouldn't give him an advantage by stopping it. No, you wouldn't. He's going to reach up and swat his hand off that cage and tell him to get off of there. And you see Harold, Mike, looking to isolate an arm so he can throw that leg over and get an, an arm bar in. And, and that's what it looks like he's doing to me from this position. Maybe even a, maybe even a shoulder choke, trying to get that shoulder across. I think he's looking to see what Justin Wright's going to give him. He's got a multi- <laughs> Two of things, you know, arm lock, triangle, you know, a number of things that he could be looking for, depending on what Justin Wright does. But Justin Wright just makes things difficult. Well, Mike, you. with only four seconds left in this fight, this has been a battle. I'm proud of both these guys are stepping in here, giving it their all, whether it's Harold and his uh, fighting off his back or Justin Wright standing up trying to knock you out. It's been a good one. Well, we've got round three of three of the Ultimate Combat Experience. Justin Wright and Harold Lucambio when we come back. Welcome back to the Ultimate Combat Experience. If you're just joining us, you see right here on your Crush Combat Cam where Harold Lucambio and Big J Justin Wright have been pretty much slugging it out for two rounds here, Johnny Ritchie. <laughs> it's kind of been a seesaw battle, one of those that, as we mentioned at the start of this fight, it's going to be one of those that are tough to judge, tough to referee, and tough to score. What do you call it after two? Oh, Mike, what do I call it after two? I think Justin Wright's really pressed the action. I think Harold has been looking for submissions, but if it wasn't for Justin coming on top of him and really throwing him around, that might not be the situation. I've got it around. A piece. I think Justin Wright won the first round, uh, but Harold Lucambio got a couple takedowns there in round two. He was immediately reversed, but I think he was pressing the action in the second round. But again, once again, our opinions mean absolutely nothing. Mean absolutely, absolutely nothing. nothing. But one thing Just about Mike wife. is, we, <laughs> no kidding, as we've called this fight pretty much the way we predicted it in the beginning. You know, Harold's going to try to take you down. He's going to try to submit you. Justin Wright's going to stand up and try to bang with you. And, you know, it just maybe the fighters in the future might could take a look at these guys and really know what they have to do to beat a Justin Wright and well, beat a Harold Lucambio. Yeah. That's a good point, you know, but Harold Lucambio is so tricky at taking you down, he makes you think that you took him down. He'll yeah. shoot in on you, and then as you try to defend it and hip into him, he'll fall right back and pull you into his guard. But I think Steve Sharp's got, got him making a few adjustments over there in the corner, and uh, when they when he pulls him into his guard, Steve's got him standing right back up. Let's go up on our feet. Yeah, don't, don't give Harold the chance to, to get that, but right there, uh, Harold Lucambio did a pretty good job, picked him up and took him down. In what could be a very pivotal takedown sure, there, as, as you mentioned, you know, depending on how the judges saw this fight earlier on uh, that could be something that wins it for you if he's able to do with something with it here well now Justin's uh, you know looking for that guillotine choke but you can't really guillotine Harold he's got too much submission experience especially when he's in uh, half guard uh, Harold is pretty uh, tough and he's just tough he's yeah. a tough kid that's going to gut out uh, a submission attempt like that you're going to have to really earn something with him and now he gets side mount position and he's looking to improve and uh, now let's see if he can take something from here this is a good position for Harold to be in Mike and this is kind of where he wanted to Ooh. be from. Oh, and that was a good shot right that was there. A nice shot. And full, full mount, mount. Can he keep it though? He's so just oh, so long and yes. strong. Powers him over. He's just so long for him. Man, it's oh difficult. My. And he's done that on a couple of occasions in this fight here, where he just reached up and thrown Harold off him. And look at him, Mike. Not afraid, not looking for a submission one. Dropping big forearms, big punches upon Harold. But let's not take it away from Harold. He's doing a good job of defending. Those uh, shots are just glancing right off his arms. Rarely, so. if ever, do you see Harold Lacamio get hit flush. He's able yeah. to deflect him just 
just enough to, to keep the punches from really doing a lot of damage, but they still look like they're doing a lot of damage when a kid sits up like that and drops bombs from way up high like that. <laughs> like, I'll tell you one thing about Harold, too, is if that was me on there, I would be huffing and probably dying right now. Yeah. And he, look at it, he's so composed. It doesn't even look like he's really in a fight other than the fact that he's getting hit. Oh, it's a full-time <laughs> job being Harold Acambio. <laughs> full-time job. Oh, man. And, but, man, Justin Wright traps the arm right there with the knee, uh, drops a couple more punches. You hear Steve Sharp in his corner uh, telling him, drop, you know, put pressure on that arm and free his head up so you can land punches because Harold's doing a great job of blocking those shots with his arms. Harold has a tendency in a third round to, to not do anything to steal the round yeah. or to really win the fight and leave an impression. He, he, he kind of rests on his laurels from rounds earlier rounds, and, and I think he's going to run into a problem here when judges start scoring this fight. You can't finish on your back because no. that's an impression that you've just left on the judges that you spent the entire fight on your back, and yeah, now you're doing your nothing to try to get off. And, that, and that's right, Mike, with two seconds left. Uh, this fight, Mike, uh, in my opinion, it was one of the better ones we've seen. It was a chess match. Uh, Justin Wright thought he had he knew what he had to do to win against Harold Lucambio, and Harold tried to do his best to get Justin uh, down on the mat with him, and, and Justin did a great job of defending it, but also Harold did a great job of not standing up in Big J's well, world. It's going to be a tough one to score, i got to tell you. I don't think either one of these guys can complain about a judge's decision on this because you know, was it really outright won by one person? Probably not. Probably but, not, no. But in my very humble opinion, I think Justin Wright probably pull it out there at the end. Yeah, no unanimous decision. It's split decision, Mike, you know, if that. But I tell you, Harold Ducambio did a great job uh, looking for a submission. But Justin Wright may have just edged him uh, with, with punches. Uh, we've heard our opinions. Let's hear what the judges have to say about it. 30, 27. Judge number two. Scores in 30, 27. Judge number three scores in 30, 47. For your winner, fighting out for the red corner. Well, all three judges wow. saw it the same way, Johnny Richie. They gave all three rounds to Justin Wright, and you really can't complain about that. Either way, Justin Wright comes away with a big win against a very tough opponent, Harold Lucambio, and uh, once again, donning his uh, championship cup there. This post-fight interview is sponsored by The Keyhole with their new location at 3460 South Redwood Road. Harold, baby! What do you do against a guy that is so long and lean and, and just tough? What do you do? Well, you know, first one, one of my first, third time I fought somebody as big as him. I give him that, a lot of credit. He, he hits hard. He's long, man. He's long. Hey, he hits hard, and those elbows are devastating, Harold. But your submission, we, you saw that triangle. Was there, I, I, I never seen a reverse triangle before. I go, Mike, what's he doing? He goes, he goes that's a reverse triangle. Yeah. You had it. What, what was going on? What, what, why didn't you get the lock on? Explain it. Uh, because he was making room with his other arm, so I wasn't fully loaded right there. But this is, you know, he, he knew what I was doing, so I'm best proud to him. So he's tough and he's smart. Harold, so are you. I can't wait to see the, con the constrictor in here again. Thanks a lot for coming out tonight, man. Thanks, Johnny. You, can I get a minute just to say yeah, thanks ahead. to my, my sponsors? I just want to say thanks to What Are the Honkies. It's a restaurant located in 136 East, 123rd, Andrew South in Draper. Check them out. Uh, they have a new cantina, Donkey Tales, with uh, three 42-inch TVs. Go watch them, you know, it's so great. And I also want to say thanks to Prime Electric. Uh, they're taking care of me. Yeah, you, Harold, you were real excited about these new sponsors. We talked about that. I know, man. It's uh, finally I was able to, you know, get some people that I really see. Who else? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who else you got? Lisa Twy and Mark Twy, Jim Jones. Thank you, guys. Uh, Wilbur now is my corner, Black Belt Pedro. Uh, my dad, love him very much. Pedro Sauer. Just everybody, thank you. And all my fans, sorry again, you know, but... We, we'll, keep, we'll keep working, you know, it's not going to stop me at all. That's right. He obeys me. He does. Tonight, Terrell, we love you tonight. You were good, but just not good enough. Please come back and fight again. Thanks so much. Thank you. This post-fight interview sponsored by American Bush, Utah's only 18 and over gentlemen's club located at 2630 South 300 West. Big J, talk to me. What happened out there? Well, first of all, I want to thank my sponsors first and foremost. Uh, okay. Western States Accounting, Patrick McCarthy, uh, Call him up and get in touch. He really made that. Hey, I could use this guy. I could use this guy. Well, yeah, you know, everybody needs an accountant. If I ever make any money, I'll give him a call. Uh, secondly, I want to thank everybody who's uh, supporting Travis and Justin's family. I knew both of those guys, and that really hits home for me, too. So I want to uh, give my condolences to their friends and family. And thirdly, I guess about my fight, I need to apologize to some of you fans because I, uh, I didn't get in there and train as much as I could. I didn't have time. 
You got too many girlfriends, right? <laughs> no, just... Uh, it's hard work being Big J. It's hard work. Hey, listen, how frustrating is it for you to not to be able to fight in the weekly show, being that you're underage, and how cool is it to be able to come out here in the big show and, and do this, what you did today? Very frustrating, Mike. You know, the first few fights I had, about four out of five weeks I was fighting when I was allowed. Now I got to wait a month and a half, two months every fight. It's very frustrating, but... Well, let me tell you, for those of you at home, we got a secret we can't tell you yet, but we're going to start doing an extra show for you underage guys. Come see us. It's in an underage venue. We're going to have you guys a lot more fights, and this is going to be my superstar of that show because this guy cannot be beaten by anybody under 21 anywhere. Over 21, Mike. Come on, no, I'm just kidding. Under 21, over 20. Great job tonight. And at their cantina, they got margaritas and enchiladas. <laughs> they got a lounge. You got to love Harold, man. You got to love him. Congratulations. You got some sponsors. Good for him. Go see him at the uh, Guadalajara. There you go. Guadalajara. Go check it out. Hey, great fight. Great Way fight. to get things going, Absolutely. man. Pump the crowd up. It was Thanks, great. guys. Come on in. Put on a show. Great job. We got more of the ultimate combat. Don't go anywhere.